Hey everyone, welcome to the video for section 9.7. So this video we're talking about periodic solutions and different ways you can get periodic solutions in nonlinear systems. So for linear systems, all you can really get are centers, which is the only way you really get periodic solutions. But for nonlinear systems, you can do, get them in a lot, different, a lot of different ways. So we're going to talk about those here and the idea of a limit cycle, which is sort of a limiting periodic solution that you get instead of having a limit point, you have a limit cycle. So we'll talk about those, what they are, and sort of see how they all work. So let's go ahead and jump on into it. So first of all, what do we mean by a periodic solution? Well, we say something is periodic if x of t plus some capital T equals x of t for some t positive. And so obviously, constant solutions are periodic. They always do this because they don't move at all, so they're always periodic. But ideally, we're looking for non-constant -peri non periodic solutions. Periodic stuff is more interesting. And so the main example we have of this so far are centers. So we have a linear system, we have a center that gives us periodic solutions that just go around and around and around and don't stop. And we also saw that we get this from the predator prey models as well. However, there are more complicated ways you can get these sorts of periodic ideas and more complicated behaviors that result from that. And one of the ways, one of the main things that comes out of that is the idea of a limit cycle. Now, if you look at the example in the book for this, this is this is section 9.7. So if you look at the example in the book, you'll see that you have a limit cycle, as in your solutions sort of converge out to a limiting sort of circle, limit cycle. So you have this circle here at like r equals 1, and your, your origin is an unstable spiral. But what happens is they, the solutions kind of spiral out, and then they sort of just converge into this cycle, and they don't just keep going out to infinity. They sort of stay and just get closer and closer and closer to that circle as time goes on. So that's what I mean by a limit cycle, is that instead of things converging to a point, they're converging to a curve, a closed curve, and they're going to just get closer and closer to that closed loop as time goes on. So the idea is when the limit of a, when the limit of a curve is a closed loop instead of a single point, we call that a limit cycle. And we can talk about stabilities of limit cycles, similar to how I've talked about stabilities of critical points. So we can talk about what is called orbital stability, which is the stability of a limit cycle. So these guys can have all the different kinds of stability we had before. They can be asymptotically stable, they can be semi-stable, or they can be unstable. All these properties you can have for these limit cycles based on whether or not the nearby curves come into the solution or go away from it as, as time goes on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do an example of this and then see how we can determine that we have a limit cycle and how we can analyze its stability when we get to that point. So let's do an example that's going to have a limit cycle in it. So example is going to be this one. x, y prime equals minus x minus y plus x times x squared plus y squared and then x minus y plus y, x squared plus y squared. Now let's try to analyze this via our normal method. Let's try to analyze the stability of the origin using that, because the origin is the only critical point you're going to get here. It's not too hard to see that. That 0, 0 is the only critical point. So let's do the Jacobian matrix. This is going to come out to be minus 1 plus x squared plus y squared plus 2x squared negative 1 plus 2xy, 1 plus 2xy, and negative 1 plus x squared plus y squared plus 2y squared. And if I plug in 0, 0, what I get is just minus 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1. And if you do the calculations for it, this is a stable spiral point. So it's a spiral, but everything's coming in towards 0. So if this was the entire system, you'd expect that no matter where you were, you would start spiraling towards zero as time went on. You would just get closer and closer to zero as time went on. However, that's not the case. So what we want to do to sort of determine what actually is going to happen is we're going to look at polar coordinates, right? The fact that we have an x squared plus y squared here should make it seem like polar coordinates might be a good idea. So let's look at polar coordinates. And the main thing we want to use is that r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So if I take derivative in t of both sides, I get that 2r dr dt equals 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt, or r dr dt equals x dx dt plus y dy dt. 
But I have formulas for dx dt and dy dt, so let's just plug those in. I get x times minus x minus y plus x x squared plus y squared plus y x minus y plus y x squared plus y squared. And we simplify this all this out, we get a minus x squared minus xy plus x squared x squared plus y squared plus xy minus y squared plus y squared x squared plus y squared. And if I group, well I notice first off this term and this term cancel. And I can group terms together so I get a negative x squared plus y squared plus x squared plus y squared squared because I have x squared plus y squared times x squared plus y squared. But this is just negative r squared plus r to the fourth, which is r squared, r squared minus one, and that is r dr dt. So that means that dr dt is r times r squared minus one, which is going to have a critical point at r equals one, because this is an autonomous equation again for r. So this has a critical point at r equals one, and based on the stability, we can see that if r is bigger than 1, then dr dt is going to be positive. And if r is less than 1, dr dt is going to be negative, which means that the circle r equals 1 is an unstable limit cycle. Because if I start at r equals 1, I'm going to stay there because dr dt is going to be 0. But if I'm bigger than, I'm going to go further away. And if I'm less than, I'm going to get closer towards zero. And that's how we can see limit cycles coming out of these problems. You'd probably have to be encouraged to at look for limit cycles, but you can just find them using the polar coordinate sort of idea this way. Now, if I had dr dt equals r times 1 minus r squared, this would be an asymptotically stable limit cycle. And then something like dr dt equals r times 1 minus r squared squared would be my semi-stable limit cycle. So all these are possible just based on the setup that you have here, and it just depends on what your form actually looks like, what, it's gonna, what the result's going to be. So there is an introduction to limit cycles and what they are. Um, we'll talk about it more in class. We'll see some of the problems that you can look at there, and we'll see some examples of stuff that I have in a document I'm going to post with more examples of things like this that you can figure out sort of in the same way. Um, so as we mentioned, look at the book, and if you have any questions, come talk to me in class. We can definitely discuss this kind of stuff and see where you, where you want to go with this. So that's it for this one. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next one.